Sarah, the Prime Minister has said that the scale of the pandemic couldn't have been anticipated and so therefore the impact on aged care facilities couldn't have been foreseen. What's your response to that? The Prime Minister called the Royal Commission supposedly because he was well aware that the sector was having a lot of difficulty caring for the elderly within it. So that, that excuse just doesn't wash at all. The Royal Commission's interim report, which was handed down last October, identified major issues, including workforce issues, uh, uh, staff that weren't adequately skilled, inadequate skill mix, uh, chronic understaffing, as well as major care issues that were endemic in the sector well before we were aware of the coronavirus pandemic. So the Prime Minister should have been well aware that the sector would struggle uh, greatly to contend with an, a, a pandemic like COVID, uh, given the existing major issues in aged care already. How confident or otherwise are you that if there were a major coronavirus outbreak in, a, in another city other than Melbourne, that we wouldn't see a repeat in aged care of what's occurred there? We would see exactly the same thing that's happening in Melbourne in other states, other than the states that have put in place hospital transfers as a matter of priority when a resident is infected. So in states where that's occurring, I believe that facilities would be far better placed to contend with outbreaks than they are in states where that is not the case. So in South Australia, there is a kind of order where the second that a resident uh, is infected with COVID, they're transferred to hospital. That ensures the safety of other residents. As we heard at the Royal Commission recently, Residents have the right to remain negative from COVID and if they're kept in facilities where there are people who are contagious, in facilities that may in many instances already be, st be struggling with understaffing, with other care issues, the odds are very, very high that, that, they, that the facility will not be able to contain the spread. And we're seeing that time and again in Victoria, that will be replicated in other states until there is a coherent national policy regarding uh, hospital transfers to, to ensure the safety of residents. Today, the federal government announced some more money to help ensure that staff don't have to move from one facility to another for their work. So somebody might have a job with it that involves them working across three or four different facilities. A lot of Australians would perhaps be a bit surprised to hear that that occurs at all, particularly currently. How common is it? I think that it's extremely common and successive workforce reports, including the Royal Commission report, have, have made this known to the federal government for many, many years. So the government can't pretend to be surprised by that. I understand that the public might be surprised to hear it, but aged care work is casualised. Uh, workers are paid very, very poorly. They're paid on average $23 an hour, which is less than retail. Uh, there are major issues around the skill mix in aged care. There are no mandatory staffing levels in aged care, federally mandated staffing levels in aged Aged care. So the, the, the workforce in aged care faces really entrenched endemic issues of chronic understaffing and lack of skill. And the sector has difficulty attracting and retaining staff for all of those reasons, because it's a high pressure environment that is not paid very well. And so the government has known about this for a very long time. And it is completely unsurprising to anyone who's been paying a modicum of attention to the sector that this is proving to be a major issue during a pandemic. Sarah holden -Bat, thank you very much for your time this evening. My pleasure. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.